Hello everyone, we are back for our next read aloud, and today we're going to be reading a picture book of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, you can see but it's it's by David A. Adler, so a, an author that we've gotten to see quite often um, here during this biography unit. Um, just a, a really strong author, talking about really important people in history. Um, and this one's all about Ben Franklin. Uh, this surveys the life of Benjamin Franklin, highlighting his work as an inventor and statesman. Um, an inventor, you know, just somebody who's inventing new things. And a statesman is um, somebody who's in politics, somebody who's in the government, um, holding different kinds of positions and jobs. While we are reading this book, we're going to focus on these two goals. Remember that we always have a reading goal and we always have a social studies goal. Let's read the reading goal together and I can determine, ready? I can determine or figure out the main idea of a text and key details for support. So main idea is like one sentence. Um, usually if I was going to, well, I mean, we've been practicing it. When I tell you to do a main idea, it's like a one sentence. It's like the really big idea. Um, and it's like the most, it's a, it's a way to tell in one sentence, what was that whole thing all about? Um, and then the key details um, are like the most, those most important facts. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, you'll, you'll see a graphic organizer. Um, we are going to be really trying to figure out basically the main idea of different parts of um different parts about Ben Franklin again um and we're really going to be trying to figure out what are like the most important parts or like his like what did he want what were his big goals but like what were some of the problems that got in his way and so what did he do about it um, and we're going to be using all of this to do our social studies goal. Let's read it. I can explain. I can explain how specific or certain people have done important actions or things to help change the world around them in history. Like, so like past events. And while we're doing that today, make sure I don't lose the book here. We are going to be using, so we are on lesson number 14, biography summary. So we're going to open this in Notability. Um, so we're going to be using this graphic organizer again, like the one we did during the previous lesson. So I'm going to send this off to Notability. As this is sending over there, um, if you remember from the last lesson, create new note, top right corner, hit import. Um, I'm not going to be filling this out until I'm all the way done reading the book. Make sure to write my name here. Um, just because... Um, just like when we when we use this graphic organizer for fiction, it's always good to just think about this and keep this in the back of your head, but you don't fill this out until you're done reading the book all the way. Um, but the parts I want you to think about while you're listening to me read um, are these. So we have biography summary, but in, the, um, in these two columns, the way it works, we have somebody. Who's the main person in your book? Well, I already know that's going to be Ben Franklin. So right there is going to be Ben Franklin. Wanted, what is the main person's goal? So after reading the book, I'll have to figure out, okay, what was his big goal? But what is the conflict or problem getting in the way of the person's goal? So that's the but. Like, but he wanted something, but. So how did the person try to solve the problem? So that's what he does about it. Then what was the resolution? Kind of like what's, what's kind of like the ending, especially towards the ending of his life. How did things wrap up for him? And then I'll take all of those ideas that we did and we'll put them down here as one big summary. So just think, keep those things in the back of your head as I'm reading a picture book of Ben Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts on January 17, 1706. Massachusetts was, was then one of the 13 American colonies that belonged to England. There were 17 Franklin children. Benjamin's father hoped that Benjamin, the 10th and youngest son, would grow up to be a minister. Benjamin always had lots of ideas. When he was still a young boy, he invented swimming paddles that would fit over his hands and helped him swim faster. Yeah, he, he, he was a constant inventor even when he was a young kid. Benjamin began school when he was eight years old. He had good handwriting and was an excellent reader, but he did poorly in arithmetic. In arithmetic, that word right there, means math. Benjamin's father did not have enough money to keep him in school. When Benjamin was 10, he began to work in his father's soap and candle shop. Benjamin cut wicks, poured hot wax into candle molds, and did errands. 
He hated the smell of wax and boiling soap. He hated making candles. Just good illustration, just showing his face. Not super happy. Benjamin wrote pro poetry. He loved books and reading. So when he was 12, his father put Benjamin to work in a print shop. The printer and owner of the shop was James Franklin, Benjamin's older brother. James Franklin printed one of the first newspapers in America, the New England Current. Benjamin set type and ran the press. Um, and setting type means you would take in these like wooden, um, these one boxes right there, would it hold either letters or words. And basically, um, with the right with 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 writing, um, or when you would when you would be printing like newspaper, you'd have to take all those little words and letters, um, and put them together for sentences, and then you would put them through a big printing press, like all of those words and letters would get covered in ink, and that's what you would be putting onto the paper. So, very different than what we use for computers today. He also so Benjamin set type and ran the press. He also wrote clever articles for the newspaper. He signed them. Mistress, silence, do good, so no one would know who wrote them. James was angry when he found out that his brother was silence, do good. He refused to print any more of the articles. Good illustrations there again. That's ben, ben, Benjamin Franklin in there writing. And that's his brother, not happy. When Benjamin was 17, he left his brother's shop. He went to New York City and then to Philadelphia, where he worked in a print shop. Soon after ben Benjamin arrived in Philadelphia, he met Deborah Reed. They were married in 1730. Benjamin had three children, William, Francis, and Sarah. In 1728, when Benjamin was 22, he set up his own print shop and published a newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette. Benjamin worked hard. He became the official printer of Pennsylvania. Later, he became the official printer for New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland, too. Once a year, beginning in 1732, Benjamin printed Poor Richard's Almanac. At the time, it was the most popular almanac in America. An almanac had information on the weather, recipes, and a calendar of important dates. It also had stories and wise sayings, including early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, and haste makes waste. So he had lots of um, just really good like sayings like that for people to think about. Um, and so, like, if you go to early to bed, it means you're early to rise and makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. In haste makes waste. So, I mean, in haste means you're doing things quick. You're trying to rush and do things without thinking. So, that means you're just wasting. Because you're probably going to have to do it, do it over again anyway. Benjamin Franklin had worked hard since he was a boy. By 1748, at the age of 42, he was a very rich man. He retired from the printing business. He spent his time in public service, inventing and experimenting. Benjamin Franklin helped set up Philadelphia's first fire, fire and police departments. He also helped to start the first lending library. Sorry, he, he basically created the library. And the first hospital in America. He also... He was made postmaster of Philadelphia and later postmaster of all 13 American colonies. He, he also, he, um, he was, um, even though he was like helping set up Philadelphia's first fire and police departments, those were actually some of the first ones in the, in our new, um, in America. Um, he, yeah, starting the library was, was really cool. First a hospital in America. Um, yeah, and he had a big, big part in having the, the post office actually get started, too. Benjamin Franklin invented the Franklin stove. It saved fuel and heated a room better than a fireplace. He invented bifocal glasses. That's where um, you can have glasses that have two lenses, two different kinds of lenses in them. Um, so you can see far away and close if, you're, if you need glasses. And a long arm to reach books on high shelves. Like, like a grabber hook. He also invented the lightning rod that saved many homes from fires. Benjamin Franklin was very interested in electricity. In one dangerous experiment, he flew a kite in a thunderstorm. When lightning struck the kite, sparks flew down a key attached to the string. Benjamin had proved that lightning is electricity. In 1765, Benjamin went to England. 
He spoke at the English House of Common against, Commons against the Stamp Act, a tax which the American colonists felt was unfair. Franklin helped to convince the English to end the tax um, in the Stamp Act. Basically, so Benjamin Franklin is living in America, but there were still the 13 colonies. There was not the 13 states yet. And England owned those 13 colonies. And so the 13 colonies, like Pennsylvania, had to listen to England and the king. And one of the, one, and one of the laws they made was called the Stamp Act. Basically, everything, any time they want people in uh, the 13 colonies wanted to buy something, there was an extra tax on it. And it had to do anything, um, mostly, like, mostly like paper goods, um, especially like just buying paper and things. Um, and it was, they really felt like this was very, very unfair. So, Benjamin remained in England for 10 years. He told the English king and his advisors to give people in the 13 colonies more rights and freedoms, but the king refused. Finally, Benjamin Franklin returned to the colonies in 1775, soon after the beginning of the American Revolution. He was at the Second Continental Congress and was chosen to help write the Declaration of Independence. Um, so the American Revolution was when the 13 colonies had a big war against England to earn their freedom. And the Declaration of Independence was basically a document telling England we want to be free. I'm just going to check the time here, the video. Okay. In 1776, Benjamin Franklin traveled to France to ask the French people to help America in its fight for independence. The French people liked Benjamin's clever stories. They honored him as a great scientist. The French king Louis XVI agreed to send money and weapons to America. America won its independence, and Benjamin Franklin helped write the peace treaty with England. Benjamin Franklin returned to Philadelphia in 1785. He was an American hero. When his ship was about to dock, cannons were fired in his honor. Bells were rung, and a crowd waited to greet him. Two years later, in 1787, a constitution was being written to govern the new United States. Benjamin Franklin was the old, oldest delegate to the Constitutional Convention, and a delegate is somebody who goes um, to help like, write it. He was picked to go do that. He was 81 years old. In his final years, Benjamin Franklin wrote his autobiography. He also spoke out against slavery and worked to outlaw it. Benjamin Franklin died on April 17, 1790, at the age of 84. When Benjamin Franklin wrote his will, he called himself Benjamin Franklin Printer. But people all over the world knew him as more than a printer. They also knew him as a writer, scientist, inventor, and statesman. They knew him as Benjamin Franklin, Great American. Let's make sure my video's not going too long here. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So, um, I'm going to stop the video here quick. Um, but as when I, uh, before you start the next video, I want you to think in your head about these parts. So, somebody who is the main person in your book wanted, what is the main person's goal? But, what is the conflict or problem get in the way of the person's goal? So, how did the person try to solve the problem? Then, what was the resolution? Okay, think about those. Um, you're going to be checking it against mine.